Let me go to the the filibuster. Mike Lee, Marco Rubio, Rand Paul helped. Here is um, a year ago. Ted Cruz talking about a year ago. Things were different, but times have changed. The argument you make is a serious one, and I would not encourage any member of this body to disregard the commitments they made to their constituents. But I would at the same time encourage every member, not just to keep in mind the promises made on the campaign trail, but the ongoing views of your constituents, because as circumstances change, all of us respond to change circumstances, including our constituents. And so Agreed. one must certainly respect the promises made, but at the same time, in the nine months we've been here, in the year since the three of us were active candidates, the situation on Obamacare has changed. Look, I very much opposed Obamacare a year ago, two years ago, and three years ago. The time it was passed, I thought it was a bad idea. But a year ago, the unions didn't oppose it. A year ago, the president hadn't granted exemptions for big corporations. A year ago, members of Congress hadn't gone to the president, asked for an exemption, and gotten it. A year ago, we hadn't seen companies all over this country forcing people in 29 hours a week. A year ago, we hadn't seen one big corporation after another dropping their health insurance coverage, such as UPS telling 15,000 employees your spousal coverage is being dropped because of Obamacare, your husbands and wives have just lost their coverage. So I would submit, Mr. President, that the circumstances have changed. He's doing this without teleprompter. Uh, I think in most cases, he's doing it without notes. These are all things he is thinking yeah, of I, off the you know, top of his head after hour mm-hmm. after hour. They're trying to show his, um, wow. what they keep showing over and over again is his green, egg, green eggs reading and his green, green eggs and ham. He's reading that to his kids. That's an endearing yeah. moment for anybody else. Yeah. For anybody else, that would be an endearing thing. They would say, oh, look, the, the, they would focus on him being away from his children and he read Green Eggs and Ham. They would have had a camera mm-hmm. with his children watching that, and they would have put it side by side, and that's all you'd be seeing. If this was a president, that's all you would be seeing right now is what a wonderful dad he is. And look, he was fighting for his children, and that's not what they're doing. Nobody is playing Nobody is playing that. It's just the silly moment where he reads Dr. Seuss. Yeah, and they're like, look, he's reading Dr. Seuss. Out of, really, out of context. This guy is, I, I watched him last night, and I thought, this guy's the president. This guy's much more presidential. This oh, guy is so geez. cool under pressure. Again, I, mm-hmm. I, I ask you, look at the live video that is happening right now on theblaze.com. Look at the live video, and look at him. He's been going now for 18 and a half hours, and his tie isn't even undone. Now, I personally... God, the second I'm out of church, man. Oh my God! That tie is completely undone. He's not rumpled. Pants are unbuttoned. He looks. I mean, <laughs> belt is off. Wait, his, what, how, he, <laughs> where do you go after church? <laughs> That's before you even make it to the car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now here's uh, here's something else that uh, he said. Quit over Obamacare cut four thirty one. Yeah, this is. Uh, I guess a lot of congressional staffers. Are quitting because of the care that they're about to receive. What does it say if Obamacare is such a disaster that congressional staffers, and mind you, a lot of these congressional staffers who may tender their letters of resignation are staffers working for Democratic senators who drafted Obamacare, who fight for Obamacare every day. What does it say that staffers would be willing to quit because the quality of health care under Obamacare would be so poor that they'd rather go somewhere else rather than be subject to those laws. I think that speaks volumes. These are all great points he's making. These are great points that you just don't hear. You just don't hear anybody. That, that's why they've granted. You know, you hear the part that they've granted themselves an exception. Yeah. But you don't hear that it's because all of the staffers are quitting. I mean, I I was so outraged last night as I was watching this and I was thinking and I kept hearing that they have a special exemption, a special exemption. I I know that and I've heard that. But the more you think about it, the more you realize who do these people think they are? 
They're granting themselves the exception. And we can't have it. We don't we don't have that power. We can't do that. They can say, look, everybody else, but we're different. And the president did the same thing for major corporations. Uh, it, it, I don't know why liberals aren't incensed over this. Major corporations get it. I think it's the worst part about it. It's like you can say, all right, well, they can get an exemption because, uh, you know, it would change the structure. Of their, what their argument is, is they would essentially be a pay cut for all these staffers. And look, they deserve pay cuts. But beyond that, if you want that, go through the process of passing a law that says you can do it. Don't just do it. It's not in the president's health care system. It's not part of it. They just decided to create it out of thin air because, in theory, they meant to do it originally. That is not how the law works. Go through and have people vote on it so we can see you, on record, go up and vote for your staffers to get an exemption out of the plan you love so much. That's what the that's supposed to be the repercussions of this stuff. Instead, they just do it, and it's up to Ted Cruz to, at 3 in the morning, start talking about it. Here is a cut 399. The president, you, the president said that premiums would go down. Do you remember when President Obama was defending the Obamacare bill? He told the American people, he promised the American people, he said, as a result of Obamacare, the average family's health insurance premium will drop $2,500. And he said, that's going to happen by the end of my first term. Now, Madam President, I would point out the president's first term ended nine months ago. And by the end of the president's first term, that promise was proven not just a little off the mark, not just kind of sort of a little bit not entirely accurate. It was proven 100 percent categorically, objectively false. Let me suggest to every American, if your health insurance premiums have dropped $2,500 as the president promised you, as the premise, president promised the average family, so that there would be tens of millions for whom that was true, then I would encourage you to enthusiastically stand up and defend Obamacare. Mm. And uh, the next cut, 409. And the fact that this body is so torn apart by the notion that each of us would be subject to Obamacare, subject to the same rules the American people are, it just highlights how broken Washington is.